Hello and welcome everyone uh, to our World Clone Day session. I'm Sally Kleinfeld um, with Jazz Carta, a US-based company that specializes in open source stuff and including clone, of course. Uh, and with me, you'll see in a moment, are Silvio Tomatis and Alec Mitchell, two of the developers here at Jazz Carta and authors of the Zotero Lab clone add-on that we're gonna be talking about. Uh, so Alex has been working with us at Just Carta since 2011, and Silvio joined the team in 2021. So first, I'm going to give some background of this whole thing. Um, as many of you who are have been in the Plone community for a long time know, um, Plone uh, has, since the beginning, been a good fit for um, research and academic websites. Uh, for a number of reasons, it's open source, it's like really open source, open open source, uh, which is a good kind of uh, cultural fit and also good for do-it-yourselfer types who want to create their own sites, you know, starts with a really functional site. Um, it has all those good features we love, like scalability, security, accessibility, all those fundamentals. And it also has this robust permission system that you know about. Um, making it real good for collaboration when you've got like an academics on teams and departments and, and that kind of thing. So it, it, that can be a good fit for academics. And another thing that it can do is a fairly straightforward way to let you create your own custom content types and workflows. And this custom types especially are um, really useful in academic uh, contexts for academic projects where often we're dealing with some sort of content object that has like a lot of metadata associated with it. So this lets us handle that. Um, so in keeping with this general sort of academic uh, orientation of many Plone sites, uh, in 2005, so back in the pretty early days of Plone, Raphael Ritz, who is a German physicist, a data scientist, and a Plone developer. Um, he was very active in the community at the time. He created an add-on called CMF Bibliography AT. So the CMF standing for Content Management Framework, the sort of layer that it was built on top of. Uh, AT standing for Archetypes, which was at the time the only uh, content type framework that Plone provided. Um, so he, he created this add-on, uh, which was, uh, <clears throat> which allowed people to create and manage bibliographic references in Plone. It supported a variety of standardized formats for bibliogra bibliographies, for bibliographic references, both for importing them and exporting them. Uh, and it provided 16 different uh, content types, archetypes, content types uh, for references. So different types of references would be like an article, journal article, or a book, uh, or, or a PhD dissertation. Those are the kinds of different types that it created. <clears throat> so this was very handy. And um, Jess Carter installed that add-on on a couple of our client sites where they were had bibliographies that they wanted to present. And in 2012, we did a more extensive uh, bibliography project with one of our clients, the University of Minnesota Press. So the test division of the press uh, for many years had maintained a bibliography uh, about the personality tests that they published. Uh, these are very commonly used in the US personality tests dating back to the early part of the 20th century, uh, including the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, the MMPI. Anybody into psychology will have probably heard of the MMPI. So these are big, important tests with, you know, many, many years of uses and many, many years of research about them. So the, so the test division uh, had long managed a bibliography of those references. Um, and uh, and uh, they wanted to um, they wanted to to publish that bibliography on the press's website um, and allow it to be uh, viewed and searched uh, and uh, that that was uh, their particular need for presenting bibliographies on the web. It's a, it's a large bibliography it, at this point. It's up to close to seventeen thousand references back. In 2012, it didn't have so many, but it had a lot. 
Um, so to make that happen, we did a project in 2012 in which we imported all of the references into CMF bibliography AT content types. Um, we organized the references and formatted them in the proper citation style uh, and made them available uh, both sort of in by decade listings, not, uh, excuse me, by year listings, um, and also by um, a faceted search uh, using the EEA faceted navigation add on. So that was 2012. We put that all in place. Uh, and that reference management and search capabilities that we created worked quite well. Uh, and that part of the UMP site chugged along for years, accumulating references year after year. Um, so now skip ahead 10 years to 2022. Last year, we were working on migrating UMP's website to Plone 5.2 and Python 3. We had long known that the CMF Bibliography AT add-on was going to have to go when we did that migration. It's a very large, very complicated, and completely archetypes-based um, add-on. It would have been a huge effort to port to Dexterity in Python 3. just didn't make sense to do that. Uh, and besides that, uh, in the intervening 10 years, uh, specialized bibliography management tools had sort of come of age. Uh, and now the test division was actually, like many, this is very common amongst academic institutions in the US. I know it's not as common in Europe and on other continents, but in the US, many academic organizations maintain their bibliographic data uh, using Zotero. Zotero is, or Zotero, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it, but it's an open source project uh, that provides tools for researchers uh, and a website uh, to share libraries of bibliographic references. So, so the tools allow researchers to like find and save references from web pages, um, tag them with a variety of tags, uh, add references from their Zotero libraries to papers that they're writing in Word or Google Docs or whatever, uh, and allowing them to format the references in specific citation styles. There are like 10,000 citation styles that people use for formatting bibliographies and Zotero supports all of them. Um, so we decided to create an add-on that would present the bibliographic information that the UMP test division had stored in Zotero and present it on the Plone site. And Zotero has a API that makes this possible. And the result of that work is Zotero Lib, a new Plone add-on that lets you embed a Zotero library of bibliographic references on your Plone site and display them either in listings or with a faceted search. And that said, I'm going to turn it over to Alec, who's going to give you a demo of that add-on. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Alec Mitchell. I developed along with Silvio this add-on, and I'm going to uh, show it off a little bit now. Um, Essentially, it consists of a single content type, which is called uh, Zotero Library. Um, and that content type, kind of out of the box, once you once you add one and set it up, looks like a folder. Um, so you can see here a standard Plone folder listing. If you look down here, you'll see there's a lot of pages. Uh, this is, you know, 17,000-ish items, um, which you wouldn't normally want to put in a folder. And when you click one of these, um, you know, they look like bibliographic re references, though they do have like a little Plone-like last modified thing there in this listing, because it's the standard Plone listing. If you click one, you get, you know, a kind of um, content type view um, here of the, of the bibliographic reference. This is a formatted citation, essentially. Um, and if we go back, um, you'll see here. Now, what's what's going on under the hood is what's interesting because these, like I said, there was only there's only one content type here. These are not actual content. Uh, they are they are just views on things from Zotero. So if I go to edit here, so you can see the Zotero library. You see it's got standard Plone metadata, and then one thing it has is a 
a Terra library ID and then a, a library type. There's a concept of user libraries and group libraries, um, and that just determines you know what this ID connects to. So this is a specific library ID within Zotero. It's an you know integer ID, uh, the type, and then the the style of bibliographic reference that we're going to use here, right? So if you look here, you can see as Sally mentioned there are a huge number of different things just, just within that small search. Um, so once that's done, oh, we skipped over to, to the fancy view. Um, once that's done, you end up with kind of an empty folder um, and you've got an action here called updates or Terra library items. And this is where the magic happens. Um, so this lets you push one of these buttons here to go out to that library uh, that you enter the information for to via their REST API and pull in all of the library contents for that library, all of the bibliographic references, and index them in the portal catalog. Uh, so they become searchable as if they were plone content. And we have some views that allow you to traverse to those items, even though there's no actual content object in the CMS and it pulls metadata from the catalog brain to display as if it were content. Um, this integrates because some libraries are very large and may take hours to update. If you have um, collective.celery installed, this will integrate with Celery to run this uh, sync process in the background. Um, and it uh, has some intelligence. It records a kind of version of the repository when you do this and it only pulls in changed records, new records, uh, removes deleted records when you do this. So, so it's very smart about, or it tries to be very smart about what it's pulling in and changing when you do this. If you wanna be dumb about it and just wipe everything out, uh, for example, if you change your citation style, you can use this. That will take you know the better part of a day if you have a really big library. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can enable EEA faceted navigation because that was a feature we had before um, and we wanted to retain it. So we kept our same faceted navigation UI, the same searchability. Um, in fact, on this site, we're integrating our, our portal catalog with solar. So there's a solar based uh, text search here. Um, and as you can see, we have sort of some filtering by reference format, by year range, by a specific author name and a general search. Now, Sally's got some suggestions for some searches I should put in here. What so try depression. Was the personality type that came to my mind. All right, I'll hit a search there, and then I mean, uh, um, for the author, you could filter by Choi. Which okay, well, let's scroll down. You see, we went from six hundred and some pages to twenty-one pages. I'm going to go to Choi search. Now we're down to just a few articles. And if you wanted to really narrow it down, you could go like say 2017 to. 2021 or whatever year range, obviously, if you had. And one. then, yeah, so we've got some some really quick filtering here. We can do some year sorting, which is probably the default, um, just standard kind of faceted search stuff. But it all works as if this were uh, top level content in Plone. You can see we've got some customized views here. Um, we've done some custom indexing um, for this specific um, site so you can add your own indexers for this zotero metadata um, if you want to have customized search for a faceted search or something like that you can have you can customize the individual item view uh this one here um, you can also create aliases uh, for each individual item even though they're not first class content you can um oh well that didn't work um, even though they're not first class cms content you can uh, create um, aliases to them. For example, if you are migrating a site from CMF Bibliography AT and you want to preserve URLs. Um, and then these things all have the original Zotero link available so that you can go out to the Zotero website. So that's the, that's the basic functionality, um, what it does. Um, and it's, uh, you know, very similar in terms of like the end user result to what's going what CMF bibliography AT did, but it it does it without you know creating tens of thousands of content objects in your site uh, while still having all of the kind of searchability 
functionality and having a pretty efficient synchronization with your um, online bibliographic management system via Zotero, um, which academics are, seem to become more and more comfortable with, um, at least here in the US. One of the custom features we added in this case was uh, a keyword search feature because the test of internet put a huge amount of effort into tagging these bibliographic items by keywords over the years. Um, let's see if you go back to the depression search. I know some of those, uh, some of those have keywords. Let's see. Like some of the Choi ones. There we go. Um, so here are some keywords. Um, yeah, so we've customized this view to include the keywords from Zotero, which are um, you know, in the subject metadata of the catalog and customize this so that these will go back to that faceted search with the keyword selected. Um, so you'll see here uh, a filtered result set with just that keyword. Uh, somehow we found a, a keyword that has only one page, but this one, <laughs> this one probably has more. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how, how it's been customized for this site, but those sorts of things can be can be done fairly easily through um, customized views, customized indexers. But out of the box, um, you know, it's very much just sort of a folder with bibliographic entries in it, like this, or at least that's how it appears um, on first viewing. Uh, but once you add things like faceted navigation, um, the celery integration, it becomes a, a very powerful tool. Cool. Sylvia, do you want to chime in? What was your most, what was, you know, what are your impressions of the sort of more challenging or more interesting implementation choices that uh, we made? Yeah, I think the most important part was the making sure that even with such a huge number of objects, the product still works fine and uh, isn't too taxing on the site. So the choice of not using a full fledged object was pretty important. And uh, also uh, allowing to fetch uh, partial updates from Zorro is pretty handy. So if you have a huge library where some updates happen daily, you can keep it up to date without the need to do a full re-index. Um, and the product will work fine uh, without the seller integration just for smaller libraries. But as soon as you have a bigger one, it probably won't be able to do a first indexing uh, it, if you don't separate the job in a salary worker. So for bigger libraries, it's uh, advised you also install salary and make uh, the indexing happen in a salary task. And yeah, the EA integration is really, really great and makes this really shine with how this has been done so that the objects are standard clone objects and we can use all the standard tooling on top of it. Cool. Yeah, I think we have another client who will probably want be wanting to install this. So they have, it's an institution that has a lot of academic members. And of course, all those academics have bibliographies of their own works that they would love to publish. So to uh, add it to a user kind of user profile section of the site to allow these folks to uh, publish their own, uh, and they would all be undoubtedly managing their bibliographies in Zotero. So publish it on the website um, by pointing it to their own personal Zotero library with their bibliography. <sighs> Great. Anything else that comes to mind before we wrap up? I had no particular wrap up words. We just thought it would be interesting to share with the community uh, <laughs> how we kind of came to terms with a, a, a site with a very large CMF bibliography uh, bibliography that we needed to migrate to Python 3. We've known for years, we've talked about this for years that we were gonna have to do something. Uh, and this is what we came up with. So we hope that it will be useful to other um, websites uh, which have uh, an academic bent and have bibliographies that they'd like to present. So uh, I think that's it. Thank you.